Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here we go, the fourth video on electrons in atoms. Bam! So today we're going to be talking about the production of light from hydrogen using the Bohr model. I want to make sure that you review the previous lecture on just production of light using the Bohr model, but today we're specifically talking about hydrogen. Because Niels Bohr's model, he used hydrogen, and it was critical that he used hydrogen. And it's the first mathematical model of the atom. So it was a giant leap forward in our understanding. So let's figure out a little bit about this Bohr model. Okay? All right. So I got an electron right here in N equals, uh, what is that? One, two, three state. And it's going to fall. That electron is going to fall to N equals two. Okay? And that will emit a light of wavelength 656.1 nanometers. So that's going from n equals 3 to n equals 2. It's always falling or dropping from high level to low level. Okay? Let me try another one. See that electron right over there? That's in a higher energy level. That's in n equals 4. That's going to go to n equals 2. Okay, and then that will emit light, and that's going to be green in terms of its wavelength, and that's 486.0 nanometers. That's going from n equals 4 to n equals 2. Okay, the next one here is n equals 5 to n equals 2, and then that is going to emit light of the wavelength of 433.9 nanometers. That's going from n equals 5 to n equals 2. Okay, then we have another electron in N equals 6. It's going to fall down to N equals 2. Okay, and that is going to have a wavelength of 410.1 nanometers. That's N equals 6 to N equals 2. I want you to notice something here, that it's always going from a high energy level, whatever that is, high of N equals 6, 5, 4, or 3, all the way down to N equals 2 is the low. And this is in the visible region of the hydrogen atom. Now, do you have electrons that absorb energy and then fall down to n equals 1? Absolutely, but we can't see that. Do you have uh, electrons that have uh, n equals 7 to n equals 6 or n equals 6 to n equals 5? Absolutely, but we don't see those either because they are beyond the visible region. What's really, really critical about these four wavelengths is that these are the four wavelengths emitted from a hydrogen atom, okay, that are in the visible region. It's high of energy of a high N of greater than 2 all the way down to N of 2, okay? So, there's two equations that are going to become critical here in our mathematics of this. And the first one on the left-hand side there is E, that's for energy. Then H, the H is for Planck's constant. Then the nu, that is the scripted V, that is the frequency. Then the second equation is C, that's a lowercase c, so that is the speed of light, is equal to, that's the Greek letter lambda, and that's the wavelength. And then the scripted V, again, that is the frequency. So what ties these two equations together mathematically is the scripted V, which is the Greek letter nu, which is the frequency. So that ties these two wonderful equations together. So remember, high energy, high frequency, short wavelength. You can reverse these and do low energy, low frequency, long wavelength. Okay, and that's written down right here as well. Okay, hopefully that made sense to you. Okay, so if we look at this violet light, it's a large distance of fall. That's going from n equals 6 to n equals 2. That's a large distance of fall. Since it's a large distance of fall, it's high in energy, high in frequency, and short in wavelength. In comparison to that, the red wavelength of light is a short distance in fall. That's going from 3 to 2. That's a much shorter distance. And that shorter distance is equated with low energy, low frequency, and long wavelength. Think about it this way. If you're at the top of a building and you're at the 6th floor, if you were to jump off the 6th floor and land onto the 2nd floor balcony, that's a huge distance of fall that's going to hurt. If you are on the 3rd floor and jump from the 3rd balcony to the 2nd balcony, that won't hurt as much. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Large distance of fall, 
large energy, short distance of fall, short energy. Okay. Also, I want you to take a look at these values. That large distance of fall and high energy is a violet light, and that's close to the ultraviolet region. So this large distance of fall, high energy, high frequency, short wavelength is what we want to protect ourselves against. That's why we wear in the sunscreen, the protective coating on our glasses, or just even a t-shirt for that as opposed to the other end of the spectrum, which is the red light here. That's a short distance of fall, low energy, low frequency, long wavelength, and I really don't need to protect myself against that, okay? So, the red wavelength of light is actually lower in energy than the violet light. So, the violet light is high in energy. Hopefully, that makes sense to you, okay? That was another super cool video. I am the Crazy Hat Chemist, and Elise, thank you very much for this awesome hat, and thank your father for this hat as well, okay? Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Bye now.